Hello up bags, it's Jade. Welcome to another obvious tips guide for Void Train. This is pretty much going to be a bit more of a how to play, pretty much up to phase 9 or 10, the first few hours of playing the game with some tips. There will be a tutorial to take you through the basics and I'm going to just go through some stuff that I think you might not have seen or realised. Also tips about the pets, what you need to gather the most of and how the crafting kind of works in the late stages, what you're going to need the most of. So maybe good for players that have just picked up the game or thinking about trying it out to see what it's like. You got any obvious basic tips then put them in the comment section down below and if you are going to buy the game do use my code jade-place-games it'll be in the comment section and let's go with obvious tips for void train. So once you've learned the basics of moving you're pretty much going to be gathering resources on the grind. Wood and scrap metal are pretty much the things you need the most of. There's plenty of other stuff like organics and chemicals but the wood and the scrap iron are what you're going to be using to craft all your workbenches, get fine resources to refine them into other stuff so definitely get as much of that as possible. You will need some of the other materials to make and refine some of the stuff, more advanced gear that you need. But in the early stages, like I said, it's mostly just the iron and the wood that you definitely need to keep a big amount of. Food and water is not much of a big deal in the early stages. Later on, you'll be able to unlock a kitchen where you can refine some of the organics and the ice into proper water and food that replenishes you a little bit more. But when you die, you simply just respawn on your platform. So you might as well just let it run, not panic about it, and make sure you've got vital space for all the other components that you need. I'm not saying don't ever eat, but as long as you maintain or eat your food as soon as you find it to keep your bars up to 100%, you should really maybe save the rest of the space for other stuff. I'm hoping they had a bit more of a penalty for dying, maybe you lose some of your items, or maybe there is a different kind of game mode like hardcore, then you definitely obviously will need to make sure you eat and drinking. But in the early stages, it's a bit pointless, especially when these little chests can only hold three items, you'll quickly become overfilled, and they're pretty expensive to make. They cost two scrap iron, and you desperately need that to get advanced stuff early on. That doesn't mean ignore any of the wildlife, this is where you normally get some meat, but the most vital component in killing these little leeches is the fat. You'll also get a chance of getting fat from these big sharks as well, but it's not guaranteed when you kill these creatures. Go ahead and shoot at these flocks of the creatures that fly by too. You might think they only give you meat, but eventually they do start dropping fat. Like I said, fat is really hard to get hold of and it's a pain in the ass shooting these because they're so quick sometimes. But yeah, if you desperately need some, then try and shoot some of them. Again, just like the shark, make sure they're in range though that you can pick some of the fat and the resources that they drop off. Again, I didn't realise this till much later. I thought they only dropped meat because that's what I got for the first like seven I killed. So it is a bit random. And again, make sure you don't do what I did there. Kill them when they're closer to you to get the resources. Later on, you'll unlock some throwing rings that will allow you to travel across some of these rocks and go a bit further distance. But in the early stages, until you get that, make sure you kill any of these sharks much closer to your train so you can reach them vital fat resources. Fat can be used as a fuel whenever you're burning something in your smelter. Do not use it as this thing. You need it later on to make grease and that's what you should be saving all the fat that you come across for. When it comes to placement of your benches, you have to be warned that when you dismantle them, you'll lose half the resources. Pretty much you can't just pick up items and place them where you want. Whenever you do so, you're going to lose half the stuff and have to recraft it again. The only exception to this is the actual driving mechanic pieces that you can move around when you get to a depot. You have to hold the T button to alternate between using your scrapbook that can help you place items and then using the hammer which you use to demolish items. You might notice that your train doesn't look much like a train. You're not going to unlock the engine until much, much later on. So all of this stuff that you're placing on that first platform, you're going to have to potentially recraft most of it with more resources. So try and unlock a second platform as soon as possible. You'll do this at some of the terminals that you'll find at some of the outposts when you get further a bit into the game. It's the only point where you can properly upgrade your train and make it longer or bigger. You also need to have the materials ready to hit the depot to do this as you often find you might be a bit short on iron and then you're going to have to wait another three or four phases through the void until you come to another depot before you can upgrade. So try and look ahead, see what you need and make sure you've got enough of the raw materials to upgrade your train as you go along. 
You're going to need the workbench and the laboratory before you can refine all the materials needed to make an upgrade. You're going to need two bearings which require that grease as well as other components, two bolts and two springs as well as four iron ingots. So try and make sure you have all four of them ingredients before you hit a depot if you're intending to upgrade and make your train bigger. You will also need at least eight pieces of wood to make the wooden platforms to put on the platform so you can actually start placing stuff. I would say around before you get to phase 10 you want to have at least two platforms, one platform for all your crafting benches and start placing them on the second platform as soon as possible and the front platform you're going to basically start emptying out as soon as you can so you've got space for your engine. You can have your engine anywhere on the train but I still kind of like the idea of being on the front. Later on you'll be able to place walls and more decorative items to make your train look more like a train but you can only place these along the third of the engine once you've unlocked it. So when it comes to research, yeah, you're going to be researching as much as possible to get up to the later stages that you can unlock the engine and a bunch more stuff. There's loads of farming materials that you'll be able to have like crop plots, drilling apparatus as well as stuff to help you traverse the void like the throwing rings that you'll unlock a bit later on. As you go along, also make sure you're refining all materials as much as possible. Again, the main ones you're going to need are iron ingots and put all of the wood that you've got inside these smelters and stuff. You can always take it out if you need a bit to craft something, but otherwise it's going to help free up some space if you're putting the wood in the crafting benches. Later on, you're going to be crafting all sorts like copper and more. And in the early stages, I would say you probably need a ratio of around four to one. So make four iron ingots and every fifth ingot make sure it's a copper one instead as you're playing the game you can drop items onto your platform and it should pretty much just stay there until you get to one of these gates any items that you've dropped on the platforms they'll be pushed off and you'll lose them so don't think that you can just have unlimited storage Obviously this is geared towards solo players rather than multiple, but if you're playing with your friends they may be rushing ahead a little bit and you get left behind before you go through one of these gates. Don't panic, you'll simply just face through or you'll even teleport if you were mooching around somewhere else using some of the rings later. So you can't really ever be left from the train, eventually you'll hit one of these spots and it will teleport you. The depots that you come across are story led at times, so pretty much whenever you craft or get to a next phase you've got a chance of coming across a depot that might have a bit of more technology or something else that you can access. So you'll notice that you'll get the gun in the early stages, then after that you'll come across one that's got guards and a terminal to upgrade your train and so forth and so on. These are seemingly linked a little bit random but they are also tied to what phase you're on technology wise. So if you're coming across empty depots with not much going on, make sure you are doing as much as you can to get to the next phase in the research table. The depots get bigger and bigger, but you don't necessarily get as much loot as you think. You get them from them tiny little containers, but not every container drops loot. So don't always bank on being able to find a bunch of loot at these places in the early game. Try and get as much as you can while going through the void. Some of these are going to be guarded by guards, but they're pretty easy to kill. This game is not challenging in the early stages, other than just the grind for resources. You can go backwards on your train, but eventually you might hit this buffer. Ideally, you don't really want the train ever to stop, unless you've killed one of the sharks and you need to get the resources from it. Otherwise, just keep going, even if you're missing out on a few resources here and there. Each phase that you go through eventually is going to mean a chance to get into one of the depots, and that's going to offer you better chances to upgrade and also find loot in the chests. So in a way, you don't really want to waste time stop and starting. Just always let the train carry on while you gather as many resources quickly and you get in the flow of it. Later on you will be using the rings that were spoken about to traverse a little bit further, maybe exploring some of the islands a little bit more, but there's no resources on them at the moment that you can gather. It won't be till you get the story missions that tell you to follow fireflies that it's worth exploring some of them, and these are called trial islands. So these will definitely have a little bit more than the early stages of these islands where it's just barren. I didn't realise this for ages and I spent so far and so long as many resources trying to get some of these islands and there really wasn't much point in the early stages. When you throw in your rings, obviously if it's red, it means it can't hook on. If it's yellow, it's got nothing to hook onto. So only when it's green is it actually going to work. If you ever do want to pause the train or make it go a different direction, don't forget that you can shoot the levers. This is great when you're a bit further away. I can't stress how much of a grind it is to get some of the resources that you're going to need. Like I said, the fat, especially the scrap iron that you need so much of. At the moment you can't stack the crates on top of each other and they only hold up to 5 items in one stack, so it is a right pain. So 
if you're desperate for space, obviously craft and refine as much as you can into components that you'll use later. Mostly stuff with the smelter and the workbench, so things like iron bolts as well as copper wire or copper pipes. A bit later on, when you unlock the laboratory, you're going to need this mostly for grease. You won't necessarily need any resin, so don't go ahead and make a bunch of that just yet. An unstable chemical I do believe is used a lot in bandages, but again if you die there's not much of a penalisation, so don't worry about making too much of that stuff until you need it for something in particular. Another pain in the ass feature of the game is that when you research something it's going to pretty much take the same cost just to craft and make something again. I think they reduce it maybe nearly by half in some instances, but yeah it's a right pain researching a new item and then going having to get all the resources to go ahead and craft that item once more. As I said earlier, each phase will start to unlock more story sections that you'll have a chance of coming across, but there's also something else you need to know about pets. You'll find these guys at depots, sometimes in their cages, other times they'll be empty cages, it's just a bit random but you should eventually come across one. You'll also find multiple different versions or different colours and when you've built the perch you can place them on here and they will eventually start puking items up when you start feeding them mushrooms. You'll find them items in the little chest below them. Now the mushrooms you'll get from chests as you again explore more advanced depots. I do believe you can only have one perch every two carriages or so, so if you're looking to have a bunch of them you're going to have to space them out or build more platforms. I do believe each one's got a chance of dropping different items or regurgitating items or resources for you as you progress. You can switch the colour if you really want to just by going up to it and swapping them over, but don't think you're going to be taking them with you. As soon as you leave a station, it's going to pretty much ping off and you can say goodbye to your pet. Once you've left the depot, you won't be able to return to that one, you have to keep going forward. When you come across the depots that have guards, sometimes they'll drop little tokens and these can be used in the vending machines. They're meant to drop loot, that's what everyone was saying in Discord in a help bar, but I've not come across them ones yet. And you will be able to eventually upgrade and make different types of weapons or adjustments once you unlock the armory. That won't be to like phase 9 or 10, so you're going to be using just this pistol for a while. Obviously you can get headshots that do 50 damage, otherwise you're going to be doing a small amount of damage like 25, hitting them anywhere else. They're really not much of a challenge, they often get stuck, so don't panic too much if you're not big on combat or first person shooters. You don't need much skill in this game, you've got plenty of life. When it comes to dispensers, they don't always give you good stuff. You eventually get one that gives you a grenade, so look out for that in case it blows you up. Not every depot has the dispensers, usually though if enemies are there they will have one. Don't miss up the opportunity to get some prophecies from these creepy fortune telling uh, machines. These are pretty much going to give you buffs, like this one which is going to make more of the sharks attack you more frequently, meaning you've got better chance of getting them closer to you to get the resources when you've killed them. Not 100% sure if you need it in your inventory to activate it, but I've always kept it on me just in case. And I'm not sure if it's 100% random or whether or not it's tied to the phases, but I've only encountered one Prophecy Stone so far in my first 10 phases. And that's pretty much it for the most obvious tips you need to know. There is now a tutorial added to the game, like I said it wasn't there when I first started, so I ended up deleting half of this video explaining the very basics as it will pop up now when you play the game. I hope you're enjoying it, it is a bit of a grind and I'm looking forward to the next phases where things start really ramping up apparently. By phase 9 or 10 I've unlocked the ability to make my own farm crop plots but I still haven't come across many food types and I'm looking forward to the trials and hopefully getting mushrooms to feed to my pet and get more stuff. Once I've unlocked a bunch of that stuff, maybe up to phase 20, I'll do another tips guide and give you more advanced stuff and help. So if you're liking the game, do let me know. If this has made you decide not to buy it or buy it, let me know. And if there's anything else I should have maybe put into an obvious tips guide, do also let me know. Don't forget to use my code if you're going to buy the game as well. And I'll see you rat bags for more Void Train soon.